This is it. The S&P 500 has plunged over 20%. The Fed is hiking rates, inflation is out of control, and everyone is calling for the demise of the only remaining asset holding its sky-high price, real estate. In today's video, we go straight to the point and analyze the possibility that the current supposed housing bubble, which has been building for over a decade, is finally going to pop in a way never before seen in history. Something worse than 2008, an epic depression of sorts that will bring prices down to pre-pandemic levels. So to start this video off, I need to set the scene. We all know that home prices have been rapidly increasing for the past two years. The median cost of a single family home in the US right now is over $429,000. This means that since 2019, homes have gotten around 40% more expensive. Obviously, in some areas, this number is a lot worse, and in others, a little better, but overall, we all witnessed a crazy market develop in the post-pandemic world. Not to mention that during this run, rates, which play a massive part in determining monthly payments, skyrocketed to 6%. This means that while prices officially went up 40% since 2019, new buyer monthly payments went up much, much more. According to Redfin data, they went from under 1400 in 2019 to nearly 2500 as of the latest report. This means that realistically, for most people, homes got around 80% more expensive on a month-to-month -month basis. A dramatic shift that caused most experts to turn bearish, suggesting that a crash is bound to happen, especially in the face of this recent downturn on Wall Street. It's no secret that the stock market is typically very efficient in predicting future conditions, and look no further than these prop tech stocks for a glimpse into what the markets believe will happen with real estate in the near term. For example, Redfin stock is down over 90%, Zillow down 85%, and Opendoor down 87%. To make make matters worse, the leaders of these companies seem worried. Instead of buying the dip, they are panic selling at all-time lows. Specifically, Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman. He only sold stock for the past two years, reducing his stake by nearly half. This includes a recent sale where he dumped Redfin stock at $10. What other CEO who truly believes in the future of his business would sell stock that is down over 90%? Now, there is plenty of other evidence that suggests a slowdown is incoming, and I'm not going to go over each piece, but dozens of other YouTubers are reading this data and predicting a massive super crash that will take prices down to pre-pandemic levels. Reventure Consulting, one of the biggest real estate YouTubers out there, had a very specific prediction about this exact topic. Take a listen. And so in case you were someone who was still on the fence about whether the housing market was crashing, maybe you were still bullish about the future direction of the housing market. I see the financial guru Dave Ramsey still telling people to dive into the housing market. Well, you better wake up. You better not listen to Dave Ramsey because the writing is on the wall. We're in the biggest housing bubble of all time and it is crashing down right before our eyes. And those who are patient and wait things out and wait for inventory to spike, wait for prices to go down are going to be rewarded because values have very far to fall. The reason I know this is by looking at a long tested indicator of housing market overvaluation and that is the relationship of home prices to income. And we can see that in 2022, Zillow's typical home value of 350,000 was 4.8 times higher than the median income of 73,000. This ratio is about 40% above of the long-term average, the long-term 50-year average of 3.3x. So it's very reasonable to expect that home values in America are gonna crash down to the historical level of what income suggests they should be. Now, I'm not going to dismiss the possibility of such an event occurring, but I'm going to outline why I believe this crash is very unlikely. Now, the number one reason why I believe this to be true is because of the relationship between inflation and home prices. You see, housing data is very well kept. We have accurate numbers going back to pre-World War II. The same goes for inflation. It turns out that home prices essentially follow the CPI numbers. If you plot a graph starting with the home price in 1963, which was $18,000, and then bump that price up by that year's CPI, you can follow this trend for decades to come. And you can see that home prices outlined in blue essentially followed inflation-adjusted expected prices. Sometimes the actual price deviates a little bit, becoming slightly overpriced or slightly underpriced, but overall, they are extremely correlated. And in 2022, prices according to the CPI numbers are exactly where they should be. There are very few things actually going down in price in the last two years. Off the top of my head, I can think of crypto, bonds, and stocks. Everything else that's real and used is headed straight up. Think about it. Gasoline was 273 in June of 2019. Today it's $5, up 83%. 
Used cars, food, oil, gas, a Big Mac, everything is up and homes are no exception. People do not panic sell their house, especially if they bought it with a 3% rate. And most people will do everything in their power to make sure that they pay their mortgage payments. In fact, if we look at incomes, interest rates, and prices, homes are expensive, but not nearly as bad as they once were in 1980. The affordability index shows exactly this. And guess what? From 1970 to 1980, despite experiencing two recessions, wild inflation, and dramatic geopolitical events, homes went up in value significantly never crashing to pre-70 levels. Commodities like oil went from $3 a barrel in 1970 to $40 a barrel in 1980. That's a 1,300% rise. When inflation is in the air, prices lose their stability and viewing things through the prism of the dollar becomes increasingly bizarre. This is especially true once wages begin to tick up. Now to conclude, I will say that this dramatic rise from 2% rates to 7% rates will surely slow down this raging market and in hot spots, there may even be a reduction in prices. But overall, the median home price in America won't likely change much. The people who keep waiting may end up like those in 2020 who claimed that prices would plummet, yet they only went up and up. Despite higher rates, everyone understands that in the US, we get a 30-year fixed mortgage and you can refinance at any time for a lower rate. That is the deal of a century, allowing you to always search for a better bargain throughout the life of the loan while the bank is stuck at the agreed rate even if rates jump up significantly. And given history, rates will ultimately come back down while prices will continue to follow the CPI. If you disagree, I would love to hear why. Right now, home prices are at all-time highs, and while there may be a slowdown in the near term, a 2008-like scenario is extremely unlikely. I've put my money where my mouth is by buying up various out-of-the-money call options on Open Door, expiring next year. And I'll keep you guys updated on that position throughout the summer. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it.